Hello, I'm David Plazas, the Opinion and Engagement Director for the Tennessean and the USA Today Network in Tennessee. I'm so pleased to have Dr. Paula Pendergrass as our guest in our continuing campaign on Civility Tennessee. We're here at Granbury Elementary School where Dr. Pendergrass plays a very important role as an educator, a teacher. She's been with MMPS for 24 years and here at the school for eight years. And we're gonna be talking about helping, not only understanding her role, but also how she helps children find and, and learn how to respect each other and live in a more civil world. But let's talk a little bit about you at first, Dr. Pen Pendergrass. Tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into teaching. Okay. Well, you know, I, um, growing up, you know, I grew up in a single parent household. I found myself kind of um, the, the victim, so to speak, of just situation poverty because my father died when I was just a baby and so the income wasn't there. But as growing up, the one thing that kind of put stability in my life was going to school every day and just being greeted by my teachers, you know, just with a, a kind spirit, a warm heart, and education just kind of even the playing field for me. And just, you know, made it so that I could achieve whatever I want to, and it didn't matter what my background was and so it, I always had a desire after that to just work with children. I thought initially I wanted to be a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. Took organic chemistry and at that point I thought whoa wait a minute I need to rethink this and so at that point I had taken a lot of classes in education and really enjoyed my education in classes and so my guidance, my counselor at Vanderbilt at that time said you know have you thought about you know, going into education, you know, being a teacher. And then that's when I thought, you know what, I think I just might, because I knew I wanted to do something that involved children and giving them the kind of stability that I had as, you know, growing up in the classroom. And I just kind of wanted to just kind of, you know, just pay it forward. So today, if you've seen a, a landscape of change for teachers, for educators over the years, are, are there any significant challenges that you have today that you might not have had some 24 years ago? Yes. You know, growing up in rural Tennessee, I think it was, it was very different. And I think it was because, you know, most of my teachers went to school with my mom and went to school with my dad. And so, you know, the respect was always there. Now, it just seems like there's there's a difference in you know when you're dealing with the civility you know you have to be more cautious and being that role model you know we had role models then but there's been a change and you know people are you know just on edge about you know just different things and i just think it's because we have become a society where we take uh, self-interest um, more into play versus looking at other people and so I'm seeing that kind of change over the years. How do you help students learn to respect each other in the classroom? One, I try to role model what that looks like on a, a daily basis and in the classroom we don't have rules in here, we have rights and we have obligations and my students know that you know they have a right to have their um, ideas discussed and not themselves and they're obligated in order to, uh, to agree or disagree with the speaker. And that includes myself, so they can disagree with me. But it, more importantly, if they disagree, they un understand that they have to tell me, well, why are you disagreeing? You know, not just for the sake of just, just disagreeing, but explain why. And so I think doing that is giving them a voice and giving them choice. And, and it's putting that civility back into the foundation of the conversations that they have with each other and knowing that, you know, everybody may not agree with me and it's okay. And so, and, and, you know, just really showing them what respect looks like when they're having a conversation with each other. And uh, how difficult is it given that, I know that MMPS has a whole uh, array of students, be it uh, different races, being different uh, income levels, uh, do you find that that's a challenge in, in teaching and modeling? It is because you have to uh, think about the fact that our students come with us with different backgrounds, different um, cultural beliefs and things that um, are told to them, you know, through their peers or through uh, the media. And a lot of times it's not always positive things. 
And so, you know, when they come to us, you know, I have to realize that you know, those things are kind of, I'm, I'm going up against some of the negative things when it comes to trying to put civility at the center. You know, I do remember, um, I was telling my students one time that, you know, back in the, I think it was like the 18th century, if not uh, earlier than that, you know, our first president, you know, George Washington, he had like 110 rules that he had come up with civility. And he was just 16 at that time. And, you know, even reading some of those uh, rules seem a little outdated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but I think the premise behind of it is just that, you know, trying to put other people before yourself. And, and I think sometimes that's hard, especially with, the, with elementary, um, because in their mindset, you know, it's, it's always about them. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's kind of like one of the challenges is, you know, just trying to be that role model for them and recognizing that they do have different um, beliefs and practices that they uh, bring to the classroom that may not always line up with what I'm trying to teach them in classroom. So I have to be respectful in that, but at the same time, you know, giving them that respect and saying, okay, you know, it's okay for us to be different. It's okay. But at the same time, you have to show respect. You have to trust, you know, and have dignity when you're having disagreements and conversation. So tell us a little about what a typical day might be for you. Okay. A typical day um, when the students come in, they usually gather like on the carpet and we sit kind of like in, in circles, in circle style. And in circle style, the students, they don't raise their hand because I tell them, you know, when you're at home, you know, do you raise your hand when you're trying to talk to your parents? And like, no. They said, what do you do? They said, well, we just wait for our mom or our dad or our grandparents. When there's a break in the conversation, then we speak. So we kind of model that. And usually the conversations are usually about, you know, you know, their homework assignments or, you know, what's on their minds, you know. And so we talk, we just kind of debrief before we get into our lessons. But the whole, I guess, background or foundation for that is for them to learn how to indulge in a conversation. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we have debates. Um, debates are a great way to teach civility. Um, right now we're reading a book called The One and Only Island. And it's about... Um, a gorilla who's in captivity. And so one of the questions that I asked them, you know, should animals be kept at a zoo? Should we hold them in captivity? And that question just brings about a whole lot of opinion and feelings. And we don't always agree with that. But what it's teaching them is, okay, we have different opinions, but there's a common way that we address it. There's a common way that we deal with it because we're not always going to agree. So we just kind of agree to disagree, but there's rules behind that. So let's go back to, as an educator, what are some of the toughest things about being an educator today? The toughest thing? I would say just um, some of the um, dealing with behavior issues. And the behavior issues, um, even across the district from quadrant to quadrant, may be a little bit different, but they're still there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just have to recognize that, you know, our students come to us and they just have, you know, a lot of things, you know, of stressors that are, that are bugging them. And, you know, sometimes school is the only place where they get to just really just kind of let it out or just really kind of express how they're feeling, you know. And I've noticed that children today are having a little more stress on them, especially like with all the focus on grades and, so I would say dealing with um, behavior mm -hmm. is probably a huge factor, but when we put civility as the foundation for the student and the teacher and as the parents, it just makes it a lot easier. And the students come to us and they feel safe you know, to talk to us mm -hmm. about what's going on with them. What kind of support do you think the community can give you more of? Mm -hmm. I would say making sure that we have the resources to help our students get to their next step. And that next step, it may be a four-year college, it may be um, community college, it may be that job they want. And 
you know, I think we have done a great job, like, increasing our standards, making sure they're rigorous, but we really do make, need to make sure that the resources are there to go along with that. Mm -hmm. Because we can do all this work and, you know, and, and at each level, you know, from elementary to middle to high, even as elementary teacher, it doesn't, you know, once they leave me, the job is not, it's not over yet. Mm -hmm. You know, once we get them to high school, it's not over yet. We have to make sure, you know, the goal is, you know, if they go to college for them to graduate from college with that degree. So we have to make sure that, you know, the resources are there. And so I would love for, you know, stakeholders, community stakeholders to realize that. So when they're making decisions, making policies, well, when it comes to, you know, funding that, you know, put our students first. You know, even if you have to take me out the picture, you know, put them first and really look at what does that look like and not just in one particular quadrant, but all the quadrants mm -hmm. within Metro schools. Sure, so you've had a chance to teach many, many students. Have you had yes. a chance to reconnect with those that you started teaching with some more than two decades ago? Absolutely. I follow them on social media. I have uh, cell phones, they call me, and I just really kind of follow their success. And, and that's the thing that really makes me really excited, is seeing their long-term you know, success come across. And I do a lot of mentoring for first-generation uh, college students, and so just really making sure that I am a, um, a piece of the puzzle to their solution. Because, like I said, once they leave us in you know, elementary, middle, and high, the job is not done. We have to continue on. And that's really where you know, civility comes in is, you know, it's putting others first without having to be noticed. You know, I don't have to be noticed to put my students first, you know, because I see what they're doing and it just makes me really happy. So, you know, really connecting with my students, just kind of seeing what they're doing. Just, you know, to me, I'm like, that's civility. I love it. Now you talked about rights and obligations in your classroom, <laughs> and I'm wondering when someone misbehaves, perhaps abuses those rights, how do you get him or her back on track? You know, I have a, a quiet conversation. Just kind of, you know, just kind of pull them to the side and just ask him, you know, is there something going on? You know, is there something bothering him or her? Because a lot of times when a student is acting out, you know, there's reasons for it. It could be maybe something happened at home. So just really trying to talk to the student, just kind of see what's going on. Um, because usually, you know, when they're misbehaving, it's not because, you know, they're intentionally or, you know, doing it because they're upset with you. It just could be because there's something internally going on with the child. And so I just try to get to the root of the problem and they just have the child just kind of voice what's going on. And just having that quiet moment to have that conversation really helps. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we conclude? Civility can be easier than I think, you know, what we make it sometimes. We just have to dig deeper. You know, I think um, our former uh, first lady, uh, uh, Michelle Obama, I was watching uh, a recording uh, something, uh, just a conversation that she had. And I love the fact when she said, you know, when a person kind of aims low, you should go high. And that, and that just kind of resonated with me. And I just thought, you know, um, like even in the classroom, uh, when I'm having conversations like with my students, oh, when they're complaining about, you know, maybe having too much homework from another, you know, teacher, I told them, I said, you know, let's just have a conversation about it, you know. And I just really wish that as a, as a country that we practice more civility with each other. And I think that it would help solve a lot of, just a lot of issues and a lot of problems that we have, you know, whether it's, you know, at the local level, at the state level, at the national level. So that's just kind of like, you know, my, my thing just, you know, what I would change and just kind of add to anything that is different is just really having uh, people to put others
before them, before their own self-interest. Thank you, uh, Dr. Paula Pendergrass. We want to thank you for your time and for okay. talking to us here from Granbury Elementary School uh, on this very gray Friday afternoon. Okay. Uh, we wish you the best and thank you again for your service as an educator. Okay, thank you. It's wonderful. Thank you.